Hi there, Scorpio. July 2020. There's a full moon and lunar eclipse in conservative Earth sign Capricorn on July 4th. So you might not be in a very celebratory mood when your mind is on the future. It's hard to live in the moment. Relax, Scorpio. There's a lot. There isn't a lot you can do now to change things. Chiron in fire sign Aries goes retrograde on the 11th, bringing a lot of unpleasantness to the surface. You aren't exactly the best when it comes to dealing with confrontation, but haven't you avoided this issue long enough? The sooner you get out into the open and deal with it, the better. Communication expert Mercury is in intuitive cancer when it comes out of its retrograde period on July 12th making it easier for you to figure out not only what went wrong these last few weeks but also how you can fix it apologies aren't the easiest thing for you but when you're wrong you admit it you might be thrown into the spotlight when the sun moves into dramatic fire sign leo on the 22nd but now isn't the time to retreat are you comfortable in front of all those people probably not but is this a good time to show the world your hidden talents Absolutely. You deserve all the applause you get. Cosmic, spiritual, intellectual, physical, social, and emotional aspects of the self for Scorpio in July of 2020. Spiritual death. Intellectual the world. Physical the hair fan. Social the tower. Emotional the star. You got all your cards, our major arcanas. With death here, it's clearing away the old to make way for the new and being in spiritual. So you, there may be some spiritual awakening or awareness happening in July that you're not dealing with right now. And in July, it's going to be like awe-inspiring or a rude awakening. Or it, I mean, it just depends if you're um, in tune with the universe or not. Uh, the more you resist, the harder it's going to be for you. But the world and the intellectual here, it the world represents the full, the big picture, everything uh, from the cosmos to the world to all, everything in between, right? So it has all these symbols here and all this divine, you know, presence and everything going on here. It's, and it's also full completion, uh, full circle. So. It's kind of like an uh, uh, aha moment with you in July, realizing things that you thought you knew or you were unsure of, and you like get confirmation, or it could be the opposite, you get confirmation that you're wrong about things you thought you were right about. Um, this is also a um, a receiving a. one of those moments where you have joy to you know, like even crying maybe it, it, it tears of joy kind of thing of realizing what's going on in your life and your pictures of yourself and how things are working in your mind and then it could just be a um, bliss um, completion of things that have been going through your mind. The hair event here can be um, a hypocrite or it can be a true leader of you know, faith or whatever, but it's in the physical. So you could be like telling others they need to work out and eat right and you're not doing it yourself. Or it could be that you are doing it yourself and you're practicing what you preach and you're trying to help others and 
being a good having a good physical out self aspect. The tower is the um, time for a change card. Uh, this could be a tumbling of your world around you with your social self. Or you could be possibly doing it with what's going on in your spiritual, intellectual, physical self. But your social life in July is not going to be consistent as to what it was before. You're going to go through a lot of changes and you may end up coming to a crossroads of rebuilding the tower or moving away from it and starting all over again from somewhere else this may not be the right location or may not be the right mindset or social self that you're having and you have to come at it from a different angle and see things from a new perspective that you're getting in july the star is clarity, inspiration, or illumination. Um, it's in your emotional aspect, so you, you'll, you're having that um, empower, empowerment in your heart, or your heart chakra, maybe. And just, you know, it coincides with what we've been talking about with the spiritual, intellectual self, with the uh, divine enlightenment you know your emotions are going to be of bliss you may have moments of sorrow or feeling bad but it, it's like a good healthy you know not like you've been taking advantage of but more of a self-awakening of you of who you are and how you've been and seeing that you you know kind of like forgiving yourself and loving yourself at the same time so it's just a big old aha moment in July for you Scorpio universal fantasy spiritual intellectual physical social and emotional aspects of the self for Scorpio in July of 2020 for spiritual we got three of cups for intellectual we got four of wands for physical we got six of pentacles for social we got four of pentacles for emotional we got knight of swords The three cups here is those you share your destiny with. That's what the, from this deck. That's what this card generally means. So you know they're having a in um, a book I read. If you want to go to my channel and go to the playlist books I've read, uh, there's a native book, "Waking the Native Spirit." It talks about spirit dancing or spiritual dancing uh, that's what this card makes me think of and it's being it's in the spiritual with the death um go look and see how maybe you can have your soul dance with this energy coming from the death of the old and the birth of a new cycle of yourself like shedding your skin and getting that new layer of skin Scorpio and for your spiritual self the four wands from this deck is all about doing just enough not too much or not too little uh, so in the intellectual you're not putting too much thought or not enough thought you're having just the right amount of thought about things in your life or yourself and then with the world you know considering all the divine aspects of the big picture going on in your life. Six of Pentacles is about being honest about your emotions and sharing them with others to get them to work, everyone to work with you on what it is that you're trying to do. So with the uh, Hierophant there, you know, just being um, honest and speaking your heart, don't be the hypocrite and kind of practice what you preach, but also speak 
the truth that yeah I'm sorry I, I haven't been practicing what I preach or hey look I know what I'm talking about look I have the proof because my physical aspect of myself shows it for pinnacles is realizing what's really of true value from the heart and not just the material things that come and go in our life and with the tower this is the social aspect so maybe you need to let go of what you think you want or what those are telling you that because this is social so maybe this has to do with hey you know what I just want to care about what's in my heart not necessarily the physical things that make me feel good or temper feel better temporarily and then I just goes back to the old vicious cycle so you need to put it into that and build a, a new way of dealing with your social aspects of yourself because it maybe you've had bad relationships or people have been taking advantage of you so to stop that you have to come with the true value that you care about and not the physical things that they bring to you the knight of swords is um, sometimes having a path is more important than knowing where to go and he is the fastest knight in the deck and with the star you're having the um, the in illumination of your emotional self and just knowing that is good enough you don't need to get all in depth of where it's going to lead you because satisfaction comes from with uh, the um, the appreciation of yourself and just being in harmony of I, I love myself kind of thing epic spiritual intellectual physical social and emotional aspect of the self Push, cut start over Epic, spiritual, intellectual, physical, social, and emotional aspect of the self for Scorpio in July of 2020. Spiritual self, you have strength. Intellectual self, death, physical self, five of spheres, social self, six of chalices, emotional self, dragon of chalices. The strength card from this deck is telling you you don't have to fight directly um, being a compassionate reflection of those you're interacting with but it's in the spiritual self so this has to do with just you looking in the mirror and kind of getting strength about taming the beast within and then with the three of cups it is harmonizing the things of the intellectual or emotional self with the, those on your divine path and not those who are trying to d distract you from your divine path and then the death is telling you hey you know you need to cut ties with the things that aren't on your divine path and then you're cutting away the source of your problems so you can start over and get a new fresh start uh, the death card from this deck has paying homage to the things we've lost or the people we've lost or the things that have been sacrificed um, and this is the intellectual self so that's how you gain strength in your uh, spiritual self is understanding that you know things had to go and through for you to get that lesson that you needed unfortunately and maybe have to do with karmatic soul journey that you're on but with the four of wands and being you know that stabilized thought of just enough not too much not too little and then the world getting the big picture of everything and then just growing off from there the five of spheres in this deck is how things are much easier for everyone if we just 
share or have equal portions or whatever and if somebody's taking more or taking when they shouldn't be that's when problems occur and being within the physical self and the six of pentacles sharing your emotions speaking from the heart and being honest and then the hierophant being that teacher of your physical self maybe to yourself and you know what is the what you need to do for your physical self but you're not doing it or maybe you're being a little arrogant and when you're telling others that they need to do what you know just be a little more compassionate uh, share a little bit more of yourself and don't be so putting it on others uh, cooperate with that thing or that um, perception you're putting on others the six of chalices is the tug of war card for this deck and if things aren't um, equally you know putting their hands on it carrying it together like you know carrying some furniture up that takes two people into a place or you know moving around if you don't do it together and one person pushes or pulls or you end up breaking what you're holding on to right so just um, be careful with your social aspect here and the four of pinnacles and then the uh, tower you're gonna have a rude awakening if you don't care if you're not careful and you have that tug of war in your social life and the four of pinnacles told you there's your answer Don't hold the physical things more valuable than the social aspect. The Dragon of the Chalices is all about experience and emotions, knowing what you're talking about. But it, it also represents the responsibility of that. You can't just um, be a childish about your emotions and being responsible and mature. And then the Knight of Swords and the uh, Star with that elimination of your emotional self and combining the spiritual and intellectual information with the knight of swords and just knowing that you're on the path is adequate don't be impatient with this foxfire the Kitsune, what message do you have for scorpio in july of 2020 This will be a time of balance and grace, of movement that is flowing and smooth, purposeful and free. All that must be done, and there is much that must be done, is attended to with ease and beauty. And you may find that others look to you to see how one can move through so much without losing their sense of dignity. Others about you at this time are only seeing the surface of what is taking place, whereas you are able to go deep within and understand the meaning behind gestures and words, actions and energies. You are able to pierce the emotional camouflage so many people wear when they encounter others and without prying. You see the truth that lies beneath. This makes you perceptive, but do keep your counsel. If many people need their protections and will not take kindly to feeling exposed. Instead, offer the example of movement through challenges without losing the best of who you are. Let people have their secrets and know that your perception of them is accurate, fair, and will help you to fly above the troubles so many around you will immerse themselves within. Choose who you will offer your services to, who will be the beneficiary of your friendship and kindness, for your work has great value and must not be squandered with those who lack appreciation and an understanding of beauty. Choose to protect yourself through asking for your worth in all circumstances, without pride or vanity but with a sense of honoring the knowledge you have and the skills you have acquired to ensure the longevity of your pay practice, whatever form it may take. You are a true and devoted person, and the Kasuni will help you to see your own value clearly and to ensure that all you do is honor is all you do is honored and respected. 
queen of the moon oracle what message do you have for scorpio in july of 2020 Beauty. Beauty is like medicine. It can heal even the most broken spirit. Beauty is everywhere in nature. Just look. Beauty comes in many forms and we can choose to find it. I love how I look. Rid yourself of clutter and what you find disagreeable. I see beauty everywhere and it raises my vibration. One of the high needs in my life is that of beauty. I need to be exposed for, to what I find beautiful often to be at my best. You might find that a, a strange need, but it's far from uncommon, especially among creatives and artists. Beauty is, to me isn't lots of makeup or fancy skin care or society's cur current beauty ideal. For me, beauty is nature and having things I find beautiful in my environment. I look around me as I write, and I can see the inky dark clouds racing across a violet sky and the birds riding the wind, and it's beautiful. On my desk is a small piece of glass a friend made for me and a small bowl full of summer frangipani. Frangipani? Fr frangipani? Frangipani. My feet rest on a hand-woven carpet of dessert colors and my toenails are painted a shimmering turquoise my favorite color all of these are expressions of beauty to me they raise my mood they give joy to my eyes my heart and my mind everyone can experience beauty every day if they choose to look one of the important differences between the ancient pagan and the modern idea of beauty is that the old way state there is a need for the core of the self to be developed and strengthen to enable and foster true beauty. This is an important two-way double punch, as there is a strong mind-body connection when it comes to both beauty and vitality. Yes, while it is acceptable to use therapies that treat our beautiful externally, it's equally important to stop bad habits detrimental to health that will interrupt the good you are doing. For example, you could be using the most effective treatments on the market to nourish your skin, but if you can't give up smoking, there is a finite level of health that your skin can achieve. The unbalanced first world ideal of beauty is at its zenith right now, with more people than ever before undergoing and normalizing plastic surgery and injectable chemicals. Everyone has an individual right to decide how they wish their body to look and adopt an idea of physical beauty. However, it's the source of the influence that is worrying. Who told a woman who has altered her appearance that there was something wrong with her face, eyes, smile, expression in the first place? Who had the audacity to say you are not enough because she had some smile lines? Think about that. Who is making women, in particular, so fearful? Who or what wants you to question yourself in the very essence of how you interact with the world and why? Who wants you to be the same as everyone else unless of who you are? Society, some marketing guy for big cosmetics, a retouched spokes model. Real beauty is hypnotic, yet in reality it has less to do with youth than it does with the spirit coming through the skin. The word charisma comes from the Greek charis and ma, meaning the spirit shining through. Each of us possesses a unique beauty, one that gives us confidence and if we recognize it. Each of us is desirable, each of us perfectly formed to be what we want to be, but should we become too obsessed by the external, something that is, after all, fleeting, we may become un unhappy and chase an ideal that is impossible to uphold. Companion stone or metal, Larimar, or Larimer. Keepers of the Light, who has a message for Scorpio in July of 2020? Kusumi Cloak of Wisdom You already know the answer you see. Trust what you know. 
Kuthumi, pronounced Kuthumi, is an ascended master who appears as a well-dressed Indian man with a golden aura. He, his teachings were brought to the world by Madame Blavatsky in the 19th century. There are many, di many different theories as to his true identity. Many believe he was a wandering man known as a Rishi in India, dedicating to walking the path of spirit with very few material possessions. Others believe him to have been a well-educated Sikh, or Sikh, Sikh spiritual leader who had who was given a pseudonym to protect his true identity. I believe that he lived a high life, but through spiritual practice was able to let go of his need for material possessions. Now he helps light workers go beyond the limits set by others and cultivate a personal connection to God. Knowledge is learned, wisdom is remembered. You are in a real cloak of wisdom now, like Kuhumi. You have been on a wandering path, trying to find answers through study and the insights of others. But now you are uncovering the truth of your own soul. Your soul is leading the way and you are being encouraged to follow. The fog is clearing, the light has come and it is shining on you. Your soul is saying yes, it's your cheerleader. Follow it and trust the endless wisdom within you. Go, go, go. Sacred Power message for Scorpio in July of 2020. Unconditional love. Love has the power to heal and transform, overcoming any emotion. True love is fine out with its expression, tr transcending limits and experiences. People often use the term love to receive an exchange of attention and v validation. If used from a place of insecurity, love cannot be felt in its true form. This may lead us to question the quality of love we receive and how we give and share it with other people. Love drives us. Whether in relationships, friendships, addiction, or destructive habits, love or the lack of love drives our behavior and actions. If our love is misguided, we may begin to shield ourselves and reject love because we are afraid. You may experience love with conditions because you have been hurt or rejected. Previously, you have felt unsupported and unloved. Trusting the wrong people has led you down a difficult path, which at times has been challenging. Your caution around people has affected your willingness to be open around others. Your desire to be accepted by family and friends has placed you in a position of rejection and betrayal, leaving you frustrated, resentful, and deprived of unconditional love and understanding. Right now you are seeking that unconditional love. Embrace yourself and your chi inner child as, when found, this unconditional love can assist you through a deep healing process. Step away from victimhood as you redefine the meaning of love. Approach your issues with understanding and without judgment. Speak openly from your heart. Are you acting with unconditional love right now? Or does it come with expectations or conditions? We are happiest when our love is at its purest, unmixed by expectations. As we open our heart to the Eternal Mother, she comforts us with unconditional love and open arms. She requests that you assess your relationship with your own mother and learn to appreciate all your teachings of love. I call upon the Divine Mother to open my heart to forgiveness. I ask you to work through me to give and share unconditional love in all its divinity. Divine Circus, who has a message for Scorpio in July of 2020? Sacred Fool. Imagine a life free from concern about the opinions of other people. A life where you feel brave enough, feel free enough, trusting enough to play the fool, to make a choice even if it seems illogical, unreasonable, daring, or downright foolish. Cast aside sensible opinions and poker faces. The Sacred Fool invites you to live unafraid to take a risk and step away from the confines of what seems sensible and logical in life. There's much to be said for common sense. 
practicality and a grounded approach, especially with spiritual matters and creating a life that fulfills your dreams. But if you are really going to live, love, thrive, and create this lifetime to be original, then you are also going to need to be willing to run the risk of being seen to be the fool. Some people will call you stupid, naive, foolish, and delusional if you dare to dream and follow that dream in all the ways you can possibly imagine. If you refuse to give up, even if others tell you that if it hasn't happened by now, it's never going to happen, then they might say you are a child, silly, disconnected from their idea of the real world. Doesn't listen to those voices, or don't listen to those voices. They don't understand that the power of the fool is truth. In the court, the fool was the one the king would trust and ask for advice. Why? Because he was allowed to speak the truth where others would try to make politically smart choices to win them power. The fool just called the spade a spade. When the fool in, your, in you speaks is to tell you something true, it might seem inconvenient, frightening, or exciting. It might turn your world upside down or inspire you with greater happiness and faith. It's not your job to reason it away or say that it's too difficult or dangerous or potentially deluded to act upon that truth. It's your job to remember that the game of life can only be won if you are willing to take the risk and play it. So when the sacred fool is part of your hand, listen up, take a chance, take a risk, and forget about what other people think. Instead, listen to yourself and live true. Wisdom of the Oracle, what message do you have for Scorpio in July of 2020? Breathe. Patience, waiting, going slowly, wellness, meditation, trust. Patience in all things is called for right now. What do you need to do when you're in a rush? Slow down, of course. Meditate and trust. Breathe and repeat. Humans cannot exist without drawing breath. Now is the time to allow the life-giving element of air into Replenish your body, your being, and your very essence. Stop to smell the roses, breathe in the sunlight, and release the darkness and miracles will appear. Relationship message. Don't be in too much of a hurry right now. The heart needs time to open. Take a breath and let nature take its course. Release constriction and anxiety, for there is no need for tension. Savor the moment and the waiting won't be, prove difficult. Your heart knows what the ego often resists learning. Patient pa patience pays off in deep and meaningful ways. Prosperity message. You have worked long and hard. Your dreams are coming to fruition and you want to hurry things along. You are the slow one moving languidly, languidly yet still pro progressing right now in a rhythm dictated by your authentic nature, the essence of your dream. And the will of the universe, slow and steady wins this race. You will indeed win if you relax, stay the course, trust your intuition, and breathe. Protection message. Inertia, laziness, and apathy are signs not of slowing down, but of decay and lifelessness. Wake up and do something to shake this off. Go outside for some air. A walk in nature will remind you that all of life is ensouled and magical. Get some exercise, move out of your head and into your body, and breathe in deeply. Each breath is precious. Cosmic message for Scorpio in July of 2020. Balance. So much energy is being spent on others, it is time to replenish your own energy source. This card signifies a need for balance and equilibrium with your inner worlds. Your external world is merely a reflection of your inner world and right now there is a call for balance in the giving and receiving of energy. You have been taking care of everyone else's need but needs but not your own. Thank you for being the nurturing soul that you are. 
but dear one, you have really been giving a lot of yourself lately, and the balance between giving and receiving is uneven. Being in this unbalanced state can cause you to feel overwhelmed and fatigued when dealing with challenges. When you give so much of your energy, it is vital that you replenish your energy source afterwards. You can achieve this by taking some time out in nature, getting adequate rest, practicing self-love, being self-nurturing, and eating healthy, energizing foods. Be around people who will uplift and encourage this journey that you're on. It's also time to really ask yourself why your outer world is sending you situations and circumstances that exhaust you mentally, physically, and emotionally. When one gives too much without receiving the equivalent energy back, deeper issues relating to self-worth and self-love are exposed. Do you constantly give to prove your worth and justify your existence? Perhaps there is an underlying fear of losing whatever it is you cling to. Dear one, you are worthy, unique, and so be very beautiful. You are pure divine light connecting to the cosmic pool of abundance. Blessings and love. Affirmation. I am valuable, lovable, and worthy of love. Associate Chakra. Solar Plexus. Isis, what's the message you have for Scorpio in July of 2020? Proper burial for freedom. Sacrifice to Osiris, Lord of the dead. In order for life to flow and express itself, that which belongs to the world of death must be released. There's nothing to be gained and everything to be lost by trying to hold on to what or which no longer serves us, which is better left to die. Though it takes great spiritual courage and trust to allow this to happen, Osiris, Lord of the Dead, guides you now to release that which no longer needs to be part of your life so that you may be free. You need to see something through and let it go that you are free from it. You may or may not be fully aware of what this is, but your energy field is somehow haunted by the past or drained by attachments that are no longer necessary for your growth. This could be anything from a past relationship to dreams or visions that may have encouraged you in past times but are not relevant for where you are going now. It might also be the spirit of a lost child or loved one, someone that has passed on or left you li your life, or the ghost of expectations unmet from past hopes and dreams. There is so much beauty and fullness waiting for you right now. Beloved initiate, there is no need to further hold on to the past. Do not be scared. You are supported so utterly and completely in this deep healing release now and all involved will benefit from the healing change. It is not abandoning what you have loved to give it full and proper burial. It is in fact honoring and allowing what you are releasing to return to the pure love and light of the source. It is spiritual freedom for you and what you have released, which is the destiny to which all of life will eventually return. It takes great trust, but if you allow Osiris to help you, you will realize that in letting go, rebirth and growth is really possible. You may experience grief, anger, fear, freedom, and a sense of relief or a combination of these feelings as you move to let go and allow proper burial to take place. Do not be afraid of any of these feelings for they will pass naturally when allowed to just flow. These feelings will actually fertilize new life and allow you to become more of who you are in truth. Trust that Osiris will love and protect that which is released into his care through the world of death. Death too can becomes new life. There is nothing to fear and everything to gain. Star seeds, what message do we have for Scorpio in July of twenty twenty? The seven star sisters. Birthing creations, tapestry of life, expression. There are new creations that want to be born, beauty that's yearning to be woven, new consciousness that's longing to be breathed into life. If you draw this card, you're being called to surrender to these creations, to usher in a new era of consciousness and do your own bit in weaving the web of life. 
This is the card of the artist in the midwife. You're being called to ponder questions. What wants to be birthed through you? What new creations are whispering in your ear? What beauty are you being called to make? Creativity and intuition come from the same sacred place. They occur when we find ourselves flowing with the rest of life. Earth is renowned as a planet of manifestation and creativity, and yet so many of us have forgotten how to create. Somewhere along the way, we stop seeing ourselves as artists, as creatives, as poets. Yet to be human is to be creative. Creativity is part of your true nature. Perhaps you're being called to surrender to a creative project, such as a new business or a book. Or perhaps you're being called to weave beauty in your home or in the way you cook. Regardless of the end result, you're being called to express yourself through your creativity, to surrender to the creative projects that both scare and excite you, to find a way to weave beauty back into everyday life. For where there's creativity, spirit, and soul are present, and the world needs those qualities more now than ever before. St Starseed Soul Inquiry. What new creations are you being called to birth? And that's your reading, Scorpio, for July. Thanks for watching. Subscribe like go down to the link or description area of the video on youtube you know email me please become a patron of mine and i'll see you next month